with Oh no, hold Bald on. and Bankrupt is one of the website's most fascinating YouTubers. Oh no, I, I watch it. I watch this guy. Bald and Bankrupt yeah, is one of the website's it? most fascinating YouTubers. He gains over a million views per video by traveling to extremely isolated areas. However, with accusations of credit card fraud, unexplained court cases, and most notably controversial behavior toward women, to say he has a hidden dark side would be putting it pretty lightly. Take for example his very first video titled I Love India's Police Women, in which he spends roughly three and a half minutes firstly swooning over female cops, I saw what at first appeared to be a mirage, but they were no mirage. They were Indian traffic cops, and they were beautiful. Before filming some pretty questionable shots with some more creepy commentary. I stayed in the city an extra day for no other reason than to gaze upon them. In fact, I'd often stop to ask needless directions just to see their smiles up close, maybe feel a slight hint of their breath on my skin. Many of the video's comments echoed, Ha, huh, I knew it, I'm not the creepiest man alive. However, despite being a pretty creepy upload, there was no denying the footage was interesting, Bruh. especially to a Western audience. By showcasing similarly interesting culture shock footage like a $1 Indian gym, Mumbai's largest slum and a stolen item market, Bald and Bankrupt exploded in popularity, all while maintaining his vocal love for the opposite sex. There's two things that I like in life, markets and women. And here I've come to the world's only all women's market. In other videos, Bald's comments became much more expressive. Oh, sexy little things in a hijab. I'm a little bit scared to flirt. I do like a woman in a hijab. Is the hijab one when you just see the eyes? It's very sexy when you just see the eyes. Leaves a lot to the imagination. You start imagining what's under the rest of it. Although since they were nested in highly interesting videos, nobody seemed to give them a second thought. I found someone who's looking for girls like me. Where are the girls at? Let's find some chick chicks. Excluding what seemed to be one single person who wrote, maybe one thing this channel is missing is a little bit more respect for women. They're either pretty so they're like objects and creepily talked about, or they're big fat women with cankles. I love this channel, but yikes, it's weird. To which Bald actually replied, I have news for you. Men objectify every woman we see or meet. We place them in two categories, would fuck them or not. It's reality. If you think that is creepy, go ahead, but it doesn't change the facts of how men think, which which had been commented yeah, on a video whoa, where Bald had whoa. stated this. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's not even close to BZ. Yeah, if you said BZ, you're, you're just, well, you're just wrong. What the fuck? What the fuck? The team has some potties on it. Next stop, Argentina on the world tour, I think. But I have no actual interest in watching Polo. Although watching some Argentinian girls bouncing around on a horse might be fun. I don't know. Any Argentinian people staying here? Any blonde Argentinian girls? You notice? His outlook only became more solidified after moving to Russia in 2019. Look at the boobies they've given her. Oh my god, they're huge. They're bigger than Tanya's. Although we'll have to come back to the topic of women later, as in the meantime he'd find himself in a totally unrelated controversy. During a video titled The Last House in the Chernobyl Village, Bald met a man named Kolyar, who lived in a derelict forest house with no power or running water. The two struck up quite an unusual friendship, filming six different videos together during which Bald had an and, idea. And then they he chose to, to launch a line of merch with Collier's face on the front, yo, the yo, profits why, of which why? would be given to Collier Ow, so he could man. increase his standard of Jesus. living and this seemed to work perfectly. Recently, I had a t-shirt campaign. I said I was going to raise some money for someone. And well, you guys bought the t-shirts. And I've got the money, and so I'm going to come here and um, hand it over to somebody. Bald gave Collier a handful of banknotes, later clarifying the amount to be... I left him with the equivalent of what was about a year's pension money. Although since the amount of money was some... Chat, I... Listen, listen, listen. I know a little bit about, like, business with, like, YouTube or whatever. I think there's so many ways to monetize something that you want. If you really want to do something good, there are so many ways. There's no way that, that his only thought to make this work was to do some merch and give some of the profit to this guy. I'm just telling you, like, there's so many ways to monetize something. I think that's like the, like the last thing you would think of. Somewhat visible on camera, people were able to pinpoint exactly how much money was given. Genuinely. In my eyes, Bald has only given him four banknotes, which would be roughly 400 rubles or $200, which meant he only gave away the equivalent of 20 t-shirt sales. Not exactly a year's pension, is it, Bald? Although another post made things even worse. Bald failed to give Collier any of the estimated 10,000 money from the t-shirt campaign, apart from the $300 he gave on camera. It turned out that Collier wasn't even aware 
that he'd been filmed, and these kind people showed him the videos Bald made about him. In Bald's defense, giving $10,000 to someone with a severe alcohol addiction might have also been a terrible idea. Don't spend too much on alcohol, but Cole is his own man. Okay. I just hope. Even in Russia, what this is, it, the money's worth more. If you make a fundraiser for something, right? Well, it has to be for that. You cannot just give a, a, a percentage and say, well, it's worth more over there, so I'm gonna keep this. Like, dude, it's just not how it works. You can do it different. It's Belarus. Whatever. We haven't killed Collier. But while bored and bankrupt might have done the right thing here, there were more Russian controversies just around the corner. During an upload titled Would You Ride the Night Train at Chechnya, Bored was back to talking about women by stating, Hopefully at some point in the night if some stopper Chechen chick turns up and shares my compartment with me, and I can put on some romantic lighting. Salam alaikum, sister. However, as a result of calling Chechen and women chicks, Bald was forced by the Russian government to apologize for the insult. But with comments such as lol forcing someone to make an apology for a random flippant joke, Chechnya sounds like a ridiculous place. A nice healthy reminder never to go there. Most people understandably Whoa. thought that Chechnya was being ridiculous. However, Bald's next controversy was 100% his fault. British YouTube star behind Bald and Bankrupt detained at Russian Space Center. British YouTube star with more than 3 million followers is arrested near Russian spaceport in Kazakhstan. British YouTuber ordered to pay fine after Russians detain him at Spaceport. Bald had actually filmed the day all of this went down and would upload space? it under the title, This Video Caused an International Incident. He and a female accomplice had snuck into an old Soviet spaceship hangar without realizing the military had been notified who were on their way to arrest them. Bald was released with a measly 60 pound fine. However, the arrest might have played into something more serious, which happened only 32 days crazy. later. He'd upload a new video to titled The Journey Is Over, in which Bald explained he'd been unexpectedly arrested on the street and was forced to leave the country. But why? I've been kicked out of Russia with immediate effect. Banned from coming back. In the months prior, Bald had called Putin crazy and shown his support for Ukraine, the reason for which was explained during a released interrogation video. He'd state, when you have a face on YouTube if you want to earn money, you need to say what people want to hear. If you don't, it will be a problem for you. Every YouTuber received an email from YouTube YouTube, where they said you may only talk about the situation in Ukraine from the side of the Ukrainians. You can't tell it from the Russian point of view. If you do this, then you won't be able to earn money from advertising on your well, channel, email, with the audience yeah, again taking bald and bankrupt side. Wait, true? I never, I never received that. Every YouTuber? And money from advertising on your channel, with the audience again taking Bald and Bankrupt's side. Bald was really smart here. He clearly just speaks what is needed to get out of that situation. That's what I would do, the only aim is to get out. Oh. Okay, my bad, sorry. I didn't know. Anyone who thinks that Mr. Bald is a hypocrite has never experienced an encounter with Russian authorities. He's an absolute genius and a certified legend. Besides, being thrown out of Russia meant he could go to some new countries, where in Syria he'd post a story to his Instagram, reigniting an old point of criticism. Discussions about women. Me before visiting Syria thinking, must be hardcore there. Probably going to be a week of no alcohol and must not look at girls on the street or else I'll be beaten up by angry brothers. Reality of Syria. Guys inviting you to bars to drink and constantly telling you to go to Homs to see how hot the women are there. My kind of country. Just a few months prior, Bord had posted another story reading, Throwback to six years ago when myself and HB were just a couple of red-pilled young chads traveling across Siberia having adventures. We'd love to repeat those escapades and film them, but of course YouTube only allows for watered-down versions of trips. Hashtag censorship sucks. Bord seemed to imply that during his trips, he'd seen more than just the local tourist spots, and as a result, a subreddit was created titled Bald and Bald a Dossier, deeply investigating Bald and Bankrupt's history. They'd find that Bald had used the online alias Vorkuda, which was the name of a small Russian town that Bald had spoken fondly of in an article that he'd written. A person who'd met Bald in real life also confirmed that Vorkuda was his alias. Now that there's hate watchers, so a lot of these hate watchers are people who hate, right? I think bringing up valid val criticism and valid points um, that, some, that something as bad is happening isn't hate watching. It's just not. Guys, guys, guys. And I don't know if they all do that. They're the two different things entirely. A hate watcher, the way, we, the way we talk about it, is somebody who literally watch things he doesn't enjoy just to hate on it. Okay? Like most of you guys. Okay? 
I hate I, all the hate watchers. Yo, suck my fucking balls, bitch ass. Turn off, turn off, turn off, fucking ad block. Watch some ads, pussy. Fuck you. Suck my balls, suck my balls, suck my balls, suck my balls. Ilias, and you therefore might be wondering why is this important? Well, Vorkuda, who later changed his name to The Fantasist, was a prominent member of the pickup artist and sex tourist website oh, well, yeah, Forum, this, where prior to beginning YouTube, he'd talk about wanting to head to places completely off the track, where he could find provincial seedy nightclubs with puke stained carpets and suburban housing estates full of disenchanted and hopeless girls, in which his white god status is maximized even more. Bald also talked about faking his level of wealth in photos such as these, which helped him to sleep with an 18 year old last summer when he was 38, with this video titled Dirty Secrets and Double Life of Bald and Bankrupt Exposed, giving a pretty good summary of Bald's 1600 forum posts. It's therefore no surprise he joked about being a pickup artist, and when a someone commented artist, on one of his videos, big sex pest vibes. He can't help but bear creep around any woman, and it's been the same for years. I mean, I mean, dude, dude. It, 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 it doesn't matter in context, it, this is always bad. To, to deliberately maximize your power dynamics and, and whatever is fucking weird. Like, what the fuck? Responded by stating, a sex that's pest for years, weird. that's absolutely unfair and untrue. I've actually been a sex pest for decades. Bald was seemingly exercising his strategy for dealing with criticism. How do you deal with it when people are like saying terrible things about you? I suppose every YouTuber has their own techniques to cope with that mentally. But for me, like embrace it, love it, and amplify it. When someone says like, you're the biggest wanker in the world, you say, that's right, mate, bigger than you'll ever know. Even worse than you think I am. What are you going to do about it? And while this works pretty well 95% of the time, doubling down on a sex pest comment was something he probably should have just ignored. It didn't help that he was also accused of SA in the year 2000, and while an article on the incident confirmed that Bald was acquitted, the judge stated their behaviour towards the woman had been appalling. Jesus. Combine this with a forum post where Bald bragged about his Rohypnol game, and another joke on his Instagram reading, if you see this man, do not approach but call the police immediately. He is one in connection to a crime where Rohypnol was used, it's not hard to see why some might think that Bald's a bit of a creep. On top of this, Bald had suspiciously changed his name from what Benjamin Rich Swift to a more then? simple Benjamin Rich, the reason for this being explained by Bald and Bankrupt himself. He'd state, I owed £30,000 on credit cards and bank loans here in the UK about five years back. There was no way I could pay it back. I decided to change my surname to my mother's maiden name and change address and I never heard from them again for which what the audience actually admired him. Then? I respect him more now. Scamming a bank is morally right. What a beast. Keep on traveling, bro. Which is exactly what he'd do until he'd post an Instagram story in Germany. Only been in Europe two minutes and already been ripped off. 15 pounds for three mouthfuls of pasta. Germany, just like the UK, must be a failed state. They need their old leader and some Hugo Boss suits back in power to sort things out. After Bald posted that to his Instagram story, he'd receive a text from his mum reading, glad you arrived back safely but not sure about your comment with the food, prompting Bald to post another story reading, my mum always worried when I'm trolling with based comments. Mum, get off Instagram, you're too old. In fact, if I find you on here again, I'll start posting my collection of George Floyd memes, which on the internet of course ruffled some feathers, although for a slightly funnier reason. It was based from a 48 year old man is actually crazy. After Bald also showed extensive support for rockers. Andrew Tate, he was slammed by NFKRZ, despite the two collaborating together in the past. Red pill, circle jerkers, digital nomad, expat, fucking bold and bankrupt looking ass. And as a result, it seems their friendship completely disintegrated. I randomly accidentally found out that Bold actually blocked me on Instagram completely. On top of blocking NFKRZ, Bold wiped everything else from his Instagram, leaving one single image with a pretty hot girl <laughs> caption. As I wind down my YouTube career, I'm looking forward to slowly going back to being Ben from Brighton once again. In instead of Bald from YouTube. If I'm going to be congruent with that desire, then I should remove as much of Bald and Bankrupt from the web as I can. Interestingly, that had been posted on the 7th of July 2022, which was the same day as when his forum posts were first exposed on YouTube, almost certainly explaining his sudden desire to quit. Impressively, however, Bald and Bankrupt soldiered on, 
on and continued uploading high quality content, possibly realizing he could only look to the future as he had no way of changing his past. However, in a recent interview with Joe Fish, Boredom Bankrupt stated that he'd pretty much completed his travels. I've been very, very fortunate and I can say that I've pretty much ticked off everywhere I truly want to go. Yeah. I'm more interested now in learning more about my home country than yeah, I am wow. about seeing those other places. And while Bored has definitely had somewhat of a bumpy history, him quitting YouTube would be a depressing end to a channel loved by many with so much future potential. Guys, I guess I, I came to the golden age of that content, golden? not that person, but because the, all the videos that I watched, there was nothing at least that I no picked up on that was creepy and I didn't see any of that. I literally just tagged along to like his end game videos and they were all really good. So I just watched the content and I didn't know about any of this. I'm not even glazing, I'm just, I'm just telling you my experience with the channel. Well, because I, I, sometimes it happens sometimes that people are in drama and people d did some bad things and we know after and I'm like, I watched some of these videos and I almost feel bad about it, you know? But like, I still enjoyed it. I cannot withdraw enjoyment or retroactively.